Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again. We are starting our Let's Edit tutorial series once again after a hiatus, and we're back again to help get you up to speed with working with Avid Media Composer. We're starting right from the ground up. Our first lesson is going to cover working outside of Media Composer before you even launch the application to understand a little bit about what is going on before you get started so that you don't run into any hiccups once you start the editing process. Now, I'm excited to have this tutorial series back. We're going to be doing a lot of things as we move forward on our trip right now to 9,000 subscribers. So please, please, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and share this tutorial across social media to help get the word out there and to help colleagues that you might know that might be struggling a little bit with Media Composer to help get them up to speed as quickly as possible. Now, one thing that I do want to remind you of is that when you are done watching this lesson, please check out the show notes below it because we have lots of great information in there, links to other articles, links to other tutorials that are going to help get you even more up to speed with Media Composer as quickly as possible. Now, I'm really excited to get this tutorial series going. We're going to be having even webinars where we're going to talk about important Media Composer concepts. We'll have additional content, giveaways, and so much more. So again, like I said before, please like, subscribe, and share this video across social media. And I thought I would start out by asking you a question. What I'd like to know is where you're watching from. Please, in the comment section below, please just punch in where you are watching this tutorial from. And if you want, even punch in your experience with Media Composer. It just helps give me a bit of an idea about tutorials for upcoming lessons. All right, so let's get started and let's jump right in. All right, now in this lesson, what I want to do to get us rolling before the edit is to talk about three specific topics, and that's going to be plugins, project setup, and media. Now, what's important to keep in mind is we're going to start out by talking about plugins. When I talk about plugins, most people immediately associate that with things like glows and lens flares and things like that. That's not actually what I'm referring to. What I'm referring to when I talk about plugins is actual plugins that are required to work with third party media, meaning red footage, meaning black magic raw footage or potentially other types of footage that are not native to media composer and media composer won't understand that footage if you try to link to it so the question is where do you find these plugins and do they cost anything what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to navigate here over to my actual avid ama page we're going to get to the black magic one in just a second and you'll see that you can find this at avid.com slash plugins slash ama plugins don't worry you don't need to worry about typing that in i've put a link to it in the notes below and you'll notice in here that if i start to scroll down down the right hand side you'll notice that we can download canon plugins glue tools plugins specifically what i'm talking about here is red plugins red has now become a very common footage type that you'll be working with especially if you're offline in a show that you're going to want to get in you've got high res red footage you want to transcode it to low res to work with it you are going to need these plugins to work with and basically what i'm going to do is just open that link here i'm just going to go to the Avid page, and you'll notice that if I scroll down here, it's basically just a simple download. You'll notice 20, 2021.12 and above, there are the two downloads for Mac and Windows. Just download, install, it's completely free, and you can start working with red footage right away. Now, with Blackmagic Design footage, it's a little bit different. What you're going to need to do is to head on over to the Blackmagic Design support page, and as of this recording, the most current version of the Blackmagic RAW SDK is version 3.4. So you're just going to want to find whatever the most current one is, especially if you haven't downloaded it before. Once you download it and install it, you'll be able to work with Blackmagic RAW footage inside of Media Composer with no issues. But that is a topic for a later tutorial. All right. So keep that in mind. Now, standard footage, MP4s, you know, .movs. Now, I'm referring to those uh, as footage types where they're really actually... Uh, containers they're not the actual codec but for the most part ProRes files if you're working with footage you've downloaded off YouTube or anywhere like that you can simply just download that work with it in Media Composer with no issues all right so that is our little discussion about plugins that you might need depending on your workflow before you get rolling in Media Composer now 
One thing I want to do now is I want to talk a little bit about your project setup. Now, you'll see in the next lesson, when we get into Media Composer, we have the option as to where we want to put our projects. Now, I've seen people do many things with many projects. I've seen them open projects in ways that, to be honest, have never occurred to me before. So what I'm going to be showing you is sort of the standard tried and true method of project creation, project organization outside of Media Composer just to make your life simple. Now, what I'm gonna do is just navigate down to my file browser. I'm just gonna bring that over here onto the right window. And we're gonna head on down here to my Media One Drive. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that for me, my Media Three, Media One, and my Extreme SSD are all external drives. And normally what I recommend to people is that especially if you're an editor on the move, you wanna easily take a project whether it's the media and the project or just the project, you want to take it, you want to move it somewhere quickly and easily. Working with external drives is really the way to go. Now, you might also be an editor who works with multiple clients. Maybe you want to get in, you want to create an Avid Projects folder for each one of those different clients. You can do that as well. Now, what is important to keep in mind, especially if you're coming from an application like Premiere, you're coming from an application like Resolve, is that the project setup inside of Media Composer works a little bit differently than in those applications. As we know from Resolve, as we know from Premiere, when you create a project, everything is contained within that project file. All your bins, all your clip information, everything. It's the same with Resolve. You have the Resolve database that you save a project into. If that database disappears, you lose everything. It's a little bit different inside of Media Composer, but let's just talk about organization first. How I normally like to organize things is on an external drive, like in this case, my Media One drive, I will normally have two folders specifically related to Media Composer. One is the Avid Projects folder that you can see right here. And the other one is created by Media Composer, and that is my Avid Media Files folder. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So let's just talk about Avid Projects. Now, when we launch Media Composer in the next lesson, you'll notice that we come to the Project Selection window. Now, it's the Project Selection and Project Creation window that we'll use to create a project. Now, if I come into my Avid Projects folder, and I'm just going to pick a folder. It doesn't even really matter which one. Uh, this is my 25P folder. And you'll notice that I've got folders for all the different projects that I work on. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that these folders actually represent the actual project. You'll notice it's a folder hierarchy, whether you're on Mac or whether you're on Windows. And if I step into this folder, what actually makes this a project is some of the files that are contained in here. You'll see that we actually have the Avid project file right here. This is what makes this folder an Avid project and what makes Avid recognize it as one of those once we get into the application. Now you'll notice contained in here is the project, is my settings, as well as any bins that I might create as well. This is actually a very different way of thinking than when you're coming from Premiere or when you're coming from Resolve, which means that if another editor said to me, hey Kev, can you do me a favor? Can you just send me the bin that you're working on? Because maybe they have the same footage and they just want to get up and running quick. I can literally just step into the folder, copy this bin, and email it to anybody anywhere in the world, and assuming they have the same footage as me, open it and start working right away. It's not like that inside of Premiere where you have a project file that as your work gets you know, larger and larger, you're importing more footage, you're creating more sequences, that that project file is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Inside a Media Composer, it's all relative based on what you're putting into what bin. You might have one bin, as you can see here, these are actually pretty tiny, 158 kilobytes. So you might have a bin that's a few megabytes big, which contains tons of media. Now I say media, I'm talking about information, not physical media, but we'll get to that in a second. But you see, this is actually a much more fluid, much easier way to work and a much more easy, much more easy, a much easier way to organize things when you're working. All right. Now, like I'd said before, you can have as many Avid Projects folders as you want that can contain as many projects as you like. So for example, if I have client A that's coming in today, I might have a project folder called Avid or A Avid Projects. I might have B client coming in tomorrow. I have a folder called B Avid Projects a very easy way to separate one client from another. All right. So that's really on the outside how you would go about organizing your Avid projects. Keep in mind, you don't have to call it Avid projects. You can really call it whatever you want. You can call it my projects. You can call it anything. I call it Avid projects. So this way, when I'm looking at a folder, I don't accidentally move, delete something that I don't want to because I always know 
that my Avid projects are contained within that folder. Now again, keep in mind, I could have a folder called Avid projects once I step into it, have client A, client B, client C, client D, and inside there contain all of their projects. Again, the beauty part about Media Composer is that this is really a organize it how you like type of, of application. All right, so let's move on now and let's talk a little bit about media. Now, this is an important concept, especially if you're new to Media Composer. It's an important concept to understand. In applications like Premiere, like Resolve, you can link to footage or they call it, and I use importing in quotes, you're really linking to a file that's located somewhere on a hard drive. It comes in right away and you start working with it. Can you do that in Media Composer? You can. Is it recommended? No, it's not. Media Composer has never been an application that was designed to work like that. Media Composer has always been an application where the first thing you need to do is to decide, okay, what's my workflow? Is my workflow I'm doing an offline that we're going to be maybe online in a Media Composer or online in Resolve? All right, we're going to transcode all of our footage that we're going to bring into low resolution to start working with. Am I just getting in and putting together everything at high resolution right away? No problem. You can do that right away. But what you're going to be doing is every piece of media that you're linking to, you're going to either transcode or consolidate to a physical piece of media that is then managed by Avid for you to edit with. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, that's sort of an archaic workflow. How can it do that? The one thing that is tried and true about this workflow is that I'll say 95% of the time, if you're consolidating or transcoding your footage correctly onto drives that support that transfer rate, when you call up a clip and you hit play, it will always play back with no, I'll say little to no issues, all right? You'll get a lot of people that are new to Premiere, new to Resolve. They're trying to bring in some 8K uncompressed file playing off a USB 2 drive. And they're like, why isn't this thing playing back? This is ridiculous. I can't believe this. Whereas in Media Composer, assuming you follow the, the suggested path, which we are going to talk about, you should have little to no issues playing back any size media, even up to 8K off slower drives. All right, now I want to show you how Media Composer manages media. Now you'll notice that I have a folder called Avid Media Files. Now Avid has created or Media Composer has created that folder for me. Once you get in and you start importing or linking to slash transcoding or consolidating footage, and we'll talk about the difference between that again in a future lesson, Media Composer is automatically on any drive you specify going to create a folder called Avid Media Files. This is where it is going to store media that it can manage for projects across all of your projects inside a Media Composer, not on a project by project basis. All right. So if I go into Avid Media Files, you'll notice we have a folder called MXF. Now you might be thinking, well, why is there a folder called MXF? What's important to keep in mind is that once Media Composer switched over to using MXF Media as opposed to OMF Media, you could conceivably have older projects that might have another folder in here called OMF, meaning legacy footage. So that's why there's a folder in here called MXF. This just represents its current, its uh, basically current technology, current footage that we're using, all right? Now in here, you'll see that we have a folder called One. Now this is set up as a folder called One, just in case you work in a shared storage environment, you might have multiple editors that are bringing things into a certain project. In my, in my case, and probably in your case as well, because you are the only one working in this version of Media Composer, that's why you have a folder called One. Now I'm gonna show you in a later lesson how you can manage that footage. Uh, and create multiple folders, especially if you're working on things like reality TV. You know, if you're working on a massive offline for a documentary, you can easily get in and manage media as opposed to having everything dumped into one folder like what we see here. Now, you'll notice I don't have a ton of media in here, which is actually super helpful for the purposes of this lesson. But as you can see in here, this represents media that has been either transcoded or consolidated by Media Composer and added to my storage drive, which in this case, again, is Media One. Now you'll notice that we have some files tagged as A02, representing audio. We have some video files here. You'll see, there we go. And we also have two files called PMR and MDB. What these two files represent is the, the database for your media. Now, what do I mean by that database? What this actually represents is how Media Composer inside the application 
can when you double click on a clip say, oh, okay, I understand that that clip is associated with this video file and these two audio files and it will then call them up and play them back. So this database file is exceptionally important, these two files. Now, when we talk about troubleshooting media and media appearing offline, we'll get in and we'll talk a little bit about databases, how you can refresh them to give Media Composer a little bit of a kick in the butt to say, hey, if you can't find media, maybe there's something going on with this database file. The beauty part about this database file is that it is something that Media Composer, if it can't find it, will always attempt to rebuild it. So if I was to delete these two files and launch Media Composer, it will immediately look at this drive and say, oh, I see an Avid Media Files folder structure, but I don't see a database file. Let me scan all of the media in here and create a new one to relink everything for you. All right. Now, a lot of this might seem a little much and a little bit confusing, but don't worry. As we start to go and as you start to see how this works, it's going to become a lot more clear. We're only in lesson one, so don't worry. And, and as I always say, what I encourage you to do is, is to watch through all of these tutorials without actually following along. Watch them first to take everything in. You want to watch them a second time to then follow along? By all means, do that. But watch them first to try to take in as much as you can. All right, I think that's good enough for our first lesson, talking about just a little bit of uh, organizational setup before you start editing. In our next lesson, we're going to launch the application. We're going to talk about the project selection and creation window, and we're going to talk a little bit about getting some help if you're coming from Premiere to Media Composer and how you can do that. It's a little feature that was added in that you might not even know is there, but it's super helpful if you're making that transition. As I did in the beginning, I want to thank you again for watching this tutorial. If it's helped you, please like, subscribe, and share this video across your social channels. We want to get the word out there about Media Composer, about this great free series that we're trying to get to as many people as we can. So I appreciate you watching, and stay tuned for our next lesson.